So guys, welcome back and today we'll be discussing about firearm wound complex. So as we have discussed in previous video about terminal ballistic or wound ballistic, okay. So it is basically concerned with the effect of bullet on target at it impact until it comes to rest, okay. Whatever the target, whether it is any solid object or body or any tissue okay so this is the terminal ballistics or wound ballistics so now the what is firearm wound complex it's having basically uh, these elements okay like if the bullet is hitting to any victim then the body of the victim with sign and symptoms okay and at place of strike or target produces uh, some characteristic changes like we will discuss in coming slides okay now this results in this hitting of the bullet to the target and production of sign and symptoms and changes in the target tissues and bodies and all this is known as firearm wound complex it's basically having two components first is the wounding components and second is non-wounding component okay that wound the characteristic wound is the wounding component and the other related findings are non-wounding components okay so now the projectile disrupts tissue by two principal mechanisms okay there are different mechanisms but basically there are two different uh, mechanisms first is the drilling effect okay like direct laceration of the tissues occurs because of this penetrating object okay so bullet is bullet is penetrating the, to the tissue into the tissues and it's creating a drilling effect so that's why lacerations and local trauma will be there main mechanism in low velocity gunshot wounds like pistol and all in such cases there is a cavity formation and that cavity is permanent cavity like bullet is traveling along this path so there is formation of any cavity okay so we can see that cavity at autopsy and it reflects the local tissue damage produced by this path of bullet so it reflects the tissue damage by the path of bullet this is known as the permanent cavity formation okay now in high velocity like rifle wounds okay high velocity firearms like center fire hunting rifles and all there is a formation of additional effect and that is the formation of temporary cavity as we have seen like there is a formation of this is the permanent cavity along the path of this bullet okay and this causing the local tissue di uh, disruption along the path and due to expansive forces of gases there is formation of temporary cavity and that is only in c in uh, it's seen in high velocity firearms so temporary as well as permanent cavities will be seen in cases of gunshot wounds the diameter of this permanent cavity is variable and it's usually larger than the diameter of bullet okay now at autopsy the evidence of temporary cavity formation may be seen in the in the form of wide area of hemorrhage around the uh, this uh, temporary cavity there will be wide area of hemorrhage so this is suggestive of temporary cavity formation okay if the pressure of temporary cavity formation exceeds the elastic limit of the tissues then the organ may disrupt or burst and the large permanent cavity is seen at the autopsy okay so if the pressure is enough to disrupt these tissues and this cavity will open up and there is large permanent cavity will be seen rather than two separate cavities if there is enough pressure has been generated uh, because of uh, the disruption of the tissues that causing the disruption of tissues and it exceeds the elastic limit of those tissues okay so the this is the drilling effect that is causing local trauma like lacerations and uh, crashing and all direct damage okay can be seen because of this permanent cavity formation it is crushing the tissues that's why it is known as crush cavity okay the indirect damage can be seen because of temporary cavity formation because it is due to stretching of the tissues okay so that's why this is known as stretch cavity and other mechanism is formation of or damage of the tissues because of these shock waves 
okay so these are the different mechanisms of injury tissue injuries in in case of firearms so what are these shock waves basically they are generated in high velocity bullets okay so they only last for 15 to 25 milliseconds only 15 to 25 milliseconds is the time then the shock waves last high energy creating this much pressure 100 lbs per square inch pressure has been generated and they easily rupture the gas filled organs like lungs intestine and all so these shock waves are uh, easily uh, responsible for rupture of these gas filled organs so you can see these are the shock waves and bullet is traversing along, along uh, its trajectory and they, uh, these are the shock waves which are causing local tissue damage again the picture is showing the these are the shock waves which are responsible for tissue damage now firearm wound complex are different and depending on the type of weapon <clears throat> so firearm wounding in shotgun what are the different firearm wounding uh, wounds which are seen depending on the range of the firearm okay so flame reaches up to 30 centimeter in case of shotgun smoke reaches up to 45 centimeter and unburnt and partially burnt gun powders uh, reaches up to 60 to 90 centimeters in case of shotgun firearm wounds okay now if there is a contact or near contact wound then the cruciform opening will be seen and because of production of gases its margin the cruciform opening will be there and margins will be everted there may be basal impression over there because the wound is contact or near contact because this muzzle impression is right there it is pressing against the surface so because of release of gases there is negative pressure inside the this barrel and it is causing the back spatter of the tissues blood or other substance in the barrel into the barrel and this is known as back spatter now the close range in shotgun is up to one meter that is creating single circular or oval similar to contact wound okay but but blackening and tattooing are more extensive in case of close wound smoke deposition is causing blackening and smudging and unburnt and partially burnt gun powders is causing tattooing stippling and papering okay now there is a characteristic pattern that is known as Maltese cross pattern that looks like capital X shape wound like this capital X shape wound that is characteristically seen between 30 centimeter to 60 centimeters because of opening of four petals of this shotgun cartridge the petals will open up and they are creating such a capital X shape that looks like Maltese cross so that's why Maltese cross shape injury uh, are seen in case of shotgun so this is the opening up of this uh, the the cartridge case that is made up of plastic and it is creating capital X shape injury like this you can observe uh, the abrasion in the form of capital X and this is the Maltese cross pattern which is characteristically seen in shotgun bones now what happens between 30 centimeters to 1 meter there is a rat hole formation like this again the short range between 1 to 2 meter the shot enters in the body in one mass the single mass without any burning blackening or tattooing now what is the intermediate range is between 2 to 4 meters at 2 meter short mass begin to spread and individual pellet hole may be detected there is a hole and individual pellet hole may be detected between 2 to 4 meters and what happens above 4 meters short penetrates each short penetrates separately okay now what about the exit wound in case of shotgun usually shotgun pellets don't have that much energy so there is no exit wound but they can be seen on contact wounds or on on the injuries on the thin body parts such as neck or extremities okay so this is the short, uh, the firearm wound complex in case of shotgun now again this is usually in case of contact the circular oval shape or uh, cruciform okay with the inverted margins can be seen up to 30 centimeters similar the close range rat hole seen between 30 centimeters to 1 meter okay rat hole formation satellite pellets along with rat hole over 2 meters 
and over 3 meters uh, pellets are again further separation of the pellets and each pellet will be seen separately above over 4 meters of range in short gun. Okay. So the diagram is showing smooth bore firearm and separation of pellet depending on the range or the distance from the target. This is the contact firearm one. Okay, as we have discussed, it will be st uh, stellate shape or star shape or cruci form with inverted margins, and uh, there will be uh, pellets will be seen in the tract of this this firearm one. There may be multiple pellets. So this is the contact one. <clears throat> now this flame flame can cause different phenomenon like this is the burning and singeing of air will be seen okay burning singeing of air and all is due to flame now smoke is responsible for causing blackening the black powder deposition is because of smoke and you can detect by histological examination you can go for histological examinations by uh, examining these carbon particles in case of blackening now what is tattooing tattooing is basically because of partially burnt okay because of unburnt or partially burnt powders partially burnt okay they they causes the punctate abrasions in superficial layers of skin like this these are small small abrasions and this this phenomenon is known as tattooing in firearm now how to differentiate tattooing from blood stains you can easily wash blood stains but as the tattooing it's uh, in the form of superficial punctate abrasions so you cannot clean it with a cotton piece or wet gauze now this is the again the contact shotgun wound what happens in case con in case of contact wounds there is uh, expansile gases there is a huge pressure that causing the burst out fracture of skull and in such cases the brain may found outside of the skull cavity and this shot is known as cronlin shot cronlin shot so these are the contact wounds which are characteristically seen and causing burst out fracture in hard contact or contact wounds okay so next is the rifled firearm wounds so similar to the uh, shotgun wounds the flame travels up to 8 centimeters in rifle firearm wounds smoke up to 15 and unburnt and partially burnt gun powders uh, powder which is producing tattooing which travels between 60 to 100 centimeters now what is the contact or near contact wound that is causing muzzle impression obviously back sputter will be there and cruciform opening with inverted margin will be seen now close range is up to 8 centimeters similarly single circular and oval similar to contact wound will be seen now again blackening tattooing will be more extensive in case of close wound and tattooing stippling and papering will be seen because of this un unburnt or partially burnt gun powders now what is near shot is between 10 to 15 cent 50 centimeters it is basically in the range of powder blast and outside the range of flame so that's why blackening will be there there is no singeing and burning but blackening will be seen and tattooing will be seen tattooing is because of unburnt or partially burnt gunpowder and blackening is because of smoke so 10 to 15 centimeters is the is the near shot and it's out, outside the range of flame now what is distance shot is above one meter entry wound is smaller than the bullet due to elasticity of skin so skin is elastic that's why the entry wound is smaller as compared to the size of bullet now what is the exit wound may vary in different size and they are free from burning blackening and tattooing there is no burning and blackening and tattooing will be seen uh, towards the exit side no contusion and abrasion will be seen but if the person is sitting towards the or against the hard surface then the exit wound will be having abraded margins and this is known as short exit wound okay now you can see like this is the bullet which is creating gases and uh, smoke and this is the burnt or partially burnt gunpowder which is creating different kind of phenomenon as as far as the this range uh, will increase from the uh, target it causes different kind of entry wounds so what happens in case of rifle firearms this bullet moves it 
and it it causing spinning moment of the bullet which is causing penetration to the skin and it's creating abrasion color around the entry wound now this is the characteristic feature of a rifled entry wound that this entry wound is surrounded by the grease color grease is because of the metal around the uh, bullet or metal fouling or the dirt or any substance around the bullet which is causing grease formation this grease color surrounded by abrasion color that is surrounded by tattooing and smoke and bell blackening so this is characteristically seen in rifle entry wound so you can see there is abrasion color around the entry wound rifle entry wound so this is the abrasion color will be seen characteristically in rifle entry wound now what are the firearm exit wounds remember there may be no exit wound the bullet will be seen inside the body only there is no exit there may be multiple exit if uh, there is secondary missile because of fracture of bones or rupture of bullet or in other conditions there may be multiple exit wound and there may be large typical exit wound with everted margin so depending on the circumstances or type of weapon or type of bullet or range there are different type of exit wounds now this is very important phenomenon guys what is bevelling as you can see there are two tables of skull so this is the outer table okay and this is the inner table there is diploid in between and there is a this is the brain part and again this is opposite side the inner table and the outer table so towards the entry side suppose this is the entry side entry side what is happening this outer table is supported by inner table but there is no support inside the inner table because there is a soft tissue that is brain which is not uh, responsible for enough support to the inner table so that's why bevelling will be seen towards inner table in entry wound now what is happening towards exit wound this and inner table is supported by outer table but there is no support outside this outer table so that's why bevelling or the tapering will be seen uh, towards the outer table in exit wound so bevelling will be seen in uh, inner table in entry wound and what's outer table in exit wounds so this is the bevelling or tapered margins blackening will be seen in the track and this is the bevelling in skull so based on these findings you can determine or decide which is the exit wound and which is the entry wound now this is uh, the type of bullet which is known as dum dum bullet it was it is hollow point bullet hollow point the point is hollow and it expands on hitting the target it is basically uh, created to to expand it on hitting the target to causing uh, to cause more tissue disruption and decrease the power of penetration okay so this is the dum dum bullet so you can see uh, the expand, uh, expanded bullets on hitting the target and this kind of mushrooming phenomenon which is characteristically seen. Another type of bullet is the tandem bullet that is basically uh, happens in case of multiple entrance uh, wound in a single fire. If there is a single fire and multiple entry wounds are there then it can be due to tandem bullets. What happens due to first bullet fail to leave the barrel? and ejected by the subsequent fired bullets and bullet are ejected one before the other is called as tandem bullet like this this is the lost bullet in first fire and this is the striking bullet in second fire so this bullet will come out with the striking bullet like this in piggyback fashion this is known as piggyback fashion and this can create single bullet with multiple entry wounds so this is known as tandem bullet now another important features of class characteristics and individual characteristics of bullet class characteristics are known as the primary markings they are very specific and characteristically the preliminary examining uh, while uh, a bullet can exclude the large number of weapons by examining these class characteristics they tells about the make and model of the weapon okay the specific manufacturer who is the manufacturer of a particular weapon can be determined or decide by these markings they can be in the form of lens and grooves the caliber or the rifling twist the twist of the uh, inside the barrel can tell about the manufacturer of any firearm 
like these are lands and these are grooves can tell about the class or the primary markings of any bullet. Now, what are individual characteristics or the secondary markings? They are on the surface of the bullet. They are because of irregularities on the inner surface of the barrel. So, they are specific to particular weapon because of irregularities in the barrel, because of wear and tear and all, metal fouling and all. And the irregularities are due to adherence of particle of the bullet bore because of the previous shot and maybe during, the manu during manufacturing process and maybe due to metal fouling due to persistent use. Okay, so comparison microscope can be used for comparing the crime bullet as well as the test bullet for these markings, the secondary markings or the individual characteristics. Now you must be aware of this case, the John F. Kennedy phenomenon and this is the type of artifact which has been introduced in the death of John F. Kennedy. What they did was uh, suturing or debriding the gunshot wound. So it was not possible to give the opinion on these wounds which was entry and which was exit. So this kind of artifact, the surgeon induced artifact is known as Kennedy phenomenon. Again, one more phenomenon that is known as Rilasima. This is the place in Andhra Pradesh and this was uh, done by Naxalite. They uh, alters the firearm wound by deliberate mutilation, by cutting or stabbing through it. So it is it is medical legally very tough or even not possible to examine a firearm injury or it is difficult to give your opinion and this is known as Rilasima phenomenon. So, so far we have discussed about firearm wound complex. So, thank you so much guys for watching and please do subscribe for NCK extract. Thank you.